transformed system. And on that basis, Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Matt. Thank Desi. you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise on behalf of the National Party in support of the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission Bill. And I do want to start, Mr Speaker, because this is a second reading, and, and normally in a second reading we stay focused on the business of the Select Committee uh, and the discussions there and the amendments. But with your, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? With, with your indulgence, that's right, it's a big word this hour of the night. I do want to just touch a bit more on um, context. I know that is more of a first reading, but I believe things have changed since we had the first reading, the context. And why I say that is COVID-19. Because we heard on the Epidemic Response Committee uh, from uh, Sir Peter Gluckman, who told us that he was uh, forecasting that there would be, of all people who lose uh, their job or income, and if we're looking at maybe two, 300,000 people, 10% of them are going to de develop PTSD. That is a serious mental illness. So we are looking at tens of thousands of New Zealanders who are going to develop serious mental illness as a result of the impacts, the economic impacts of COVID-19. You match that up to the context that we spoke about in the first reading of the huge wave we're seeing in demand for mental health services this reinforces how vital it is that not only government, parliament responds to the mental health issues of New Zealanders. Not just about treating uh, mental illness, but also about promoting mental wellbeing. And I stand here tonight, uh, Mr Speaker, as a proud member of the cross-party mental health group. And I do hope that that group will be able to look at long-term strategies and solutions, longer than the three-year parliamentary cycle, to address this growing wave of demand that our mental health services uh, are going to receive in the short and medium term. Because what we believe over here in the National Party is that we also need to make sure uh, we are very clear at what we are trying to achieve. So we are supporting the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission. Uh, this is a bit back to the future because we have been here before. It was disestablished and, and many in the mental health sector uh, would have agreed with that decision. It was felt that the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission had lost its way. I'm confident that we do have a framework here that will make a difference. But I think it's important on all members of this House to make sure this framework that we are proposing here tonight will actually deliver a change. Because when we hear words like um, influence, um, that seems awfully passive. And over here in the National Party, we would like to see words like targets. The indicative target of the mental health inquiry said we needed to increase access from 7% of New Zealanders to 20%. So we need to make sure this Mental Health Commission will have the authority to make a difference and make a change. No one wants to see any entity just writing reports that make recommendations that sit on a shelf. So I do hope by the end of this, we will have a, a bill that will be enacted and ultimately result in an independent entity that will be able to hold uh, government departments and other organisations to account. And for us here in the National Party, that was a key focus of the select committee process. I think we had a good selection of submissions. We had 99 of them. A range of them were from academics, they're from health professionals, and, and most importantly, a number of people 
who were telling their story uh, of lived experience. And I would want to thank all those submitters, and I think they have supported the changes that we are going to be debating tonight to make this bill uh, a better bill to come back in the second reading. One of uh, the important um, parts of this bill was to help identify key groups that the Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission would focus on. The problem is when you start to look at key groups, uh, as soon as you want to put one in, you feel like you're excluding another, and the list gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But where the committee landed on, we were able to put a schedule at the back of this bill where it outlined uh, a number of groups this commission will focus on. Uh, one of them was important for us in the National Party, and that was our rural communities. The Department of Health has recently published statistics that show, unfortunately, in New Zealand, uh, our suicide rate has increased in our urban population by 7%, but unfortunately, in our rural population, by 17%. And that is why it is important that we focus, yes, on a range of groups, but equally we make sure rural communities is a group mentioned uh, in this bill. And that's what comes to this um, parliament tonight. A second uh, key part of the amendments was to ensure that we move the Commission from just reporting to actually making recommendations recommendations that will seek to uh, advocate and to improve uh, the mental health system. Because what we know is we've got a real challenge. We've got a lot of governments working in silos. Uh, if you look at uh, health, uh, education, uh, justice and corrections, all having an area of overlap in mental health. And what we do hope is with this uh, Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission, it will develop a, a key strategy uh, in making those recommendations that will be cross-government uh, and whole of government, holding those government departments to account and ensuring that they make a real difference. Because in the end, we need this commission to have the authority to hold those entities to account and make sure they respond to the mental health demands in their organisations. Another key amendment that uh, came out of the Select Committee, Mr Speaker, was uh, changing the numbers uh, of the members of the board. Originally in the bill it was two to five members. That has now been uh, increased from three to seven. A large discussion was around how we ensure, we make sure the uh, composite of those members uh, have the range of experience and knowledge and talents that will ultimately form the strategy and the direction of this Mental Health and Wellbeing uh, Commission. A key area for us, Mr Speaker, uh, was ensuring that this Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission uh, drives research. What we know in the mental health field is we still don't know enough. And we need to build the evidence base to know what works. Because unfortunately in mental health, what works potentially in another country uh, through an international policy transfer mightn't uh, be appropriate in a cultural context of New Zealand. And we do hope that this government or successive governments will ensure that there is the funding uh, for this mental health and wellbeing to ensure that there is enough research going on to understand what works in mental health and building uh, that evidence base. It's a real concern for us, uh, Mr Speaker, on, on this side of the House uh, that we need to ensure we get real movement on mental health. We have formed the cross-party uh, group and we do hope to get full buy-in from political parties to look at long-term solutions and policy settings uh, over the three-year uh, uh, cycle. But most importantly for us, the indicative target said we needed to increase access 
from 7 to 20% of New Zealanders. And if it's one thing, this Mental Health and Wellbeing Commission, if it can be successful in doing that, it would have made a real difference to New Zealanders' lives. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Honourable Dr David Clark. Uh, Mr Speaker. Um